Well, NZXT recently came out with a new line of all-in-one liquid coolers, the X31, the X41, and the X61. Today, I've got the two smaller of the group. Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and I could have made a really bad joke there at the beginning and said let's get cracking, but yeah, I did it anyway. So there you go. Like I said, I've got the two smaller of the group of the uh, fairly new line of all-in-one coolers from NZXT, the X31 and the X41. So first up, the Kraken X31, you can see here it says that it is a high performance variable speed pump. And this is apparently the world's first variable speed liquid cooler, at least the all-in-one variety of them. Intuitive digital fan control using NZXT's new CAM software. Easy installation, so the mounting is supposed to be improved. Static pressure fan is included, a FX120 V2 PWM. And uh, it does have large tower support with 16 inch tubing. This is a completely sealed system on this thing. So you do get a six year warranty with this. So if this leaks or does anything crazy, uh, NZXT says they got your back. Much the same on the back of the X41, uh, except this one is a 140 millimeter radiator instead of 120 millimeter, giving you 36% more surface area. And uh, it's 36 millimeters deep, so a 24% increase in cooling volume over the previous Kraken X40. And this also has the high performance variable speed pump, the integrated hue and digital fan control cam software, the FX140 PWM fan, Large tower support with extended 16 inch tubing and premium black sleeve cables for a clean look and improved airflow. And finally, again with this one, you got the six year warranty, everything's sealed. There's no adding fluid required here. Everything's already ready to go. So let's get these things out of the box and see what you get because got a lot to do here. We still got to run through the software and benchmark these things. All right, I'm just gonna take these things out of the box here and then I'll zoom in and give you a closer look at what both of them look like once I get everything out and show you what comes included. So first up, the X31. Got a little flap on the front, pull up, and you've got your guide right up front. And then lots of plastic. So you've got your bracket and tools and all that good stuff, or mounts. Then this is probably, yep, there's the fan. And last but not least, cooler itself so let's move the box out of the way for the x31 and you can see that everything is already attached so it is pre-sealed as I said and let's take this little piece of plastic off here get a better look okay so there's everything out of the box itself so I'll zoom in a little bit closer on this and show you everything that you get as you can see you've got the 120 millimeter radiator and a nice long tube that runs to the actual block that you will connect to your computer and the thermal paste is pre-applied. The fan that comes included is, uh, like I said, a static pressure PWM and it's, it's a kind of a familiar look for NZXT. Anybody that has used one of their cases before may recognize this fan. And then I have a feeling it's gonna be much of the same with the X41, except this one opens from a different side. So it looks like, yeah, this one's a little more involved. Turn it over and slide it out. Again, same directions pretty much as you got with the other one. And then for this one, the fan actually just comes in some plastic, so it's not, uh, not in the little piece of cardboard. Set that there. And again, very similar, same mounting kit and everything like that. And then I'll pull this one out so we can take a closer look. Uh, very similar in design, it's just this one is 140 millimeters and it is a little bit thicker. So we'll get in close on that one as well. You can also see that the cables on the X31 are not sleeved uh, and the ones on the X41 are and are actually very nice looking. So you've got your PWM plugs here, just as you do on the other. And this is going to allow you to take advantage of that nice fan control software that comes included. So. It's a little bit hot in here right now, so I'm probably gonna wait until things cool off a little bit today so that I don't have to do uh, a huge ambient temperature adjustment from the temperatures that I ran this morning, or the test I ran this morning, because I'm gonna compare this to the NHD15, which I already have installed, and uh, then in the next video, we'll take a look at the X61 and see how it stacks up against all three of these. So now I just gotta wait for it to cool down. Nice and sunny today, though. 
Right, so I've installed both the X31 and did some temperature testing and then switched it out for the X41. And I have to say, first off, huge improvement over the X60 that I installed a few months back. My big gripe with that was I didn't like the mounting system. It just didn't feel very secure and mine actually failed on me. The mounting system that is used in these coolers is actually the exact same one from the Corsair H105, which I really liked. So install was super simple since I've already done that one over and over again. And it's just a much better system in my opinion. It feels far more robust and reliable. So as far as the install goes, let's take a quick photo journey, shall we? So install really couldn't be any easier. You've got this little bracket that you either slide the uh, feet inward on the bracket for 1150X, and then you put them outward for like the old 1366 or whatever it was, the, the old socket. And then you just stick that through the back of the board. You're gonna use these four standoffs, not to be confused with the 2011 standoffs that also come included. Uh, by the way, you also get an AMD bracket in there as well. And you put those, there's what that looks like on the back of the board. So you match those up with that, just screw them in. I did it hand tight. And then that is pretty much it. You just drop the cooler on and there's some thumb screws that you put down. Use a screwdriver to tighten them up, but don't go too tight. And then that's pretty much it. You will notice though, there's a sticker that was on there. It didn't peel off very easily. So come on NZXT, I understand. The sticker said to make sure you plug in the pump before you turn on your computer. That is important but maybe put it somewhere else that's not directly on the block if it's gonna stick like that. Now, I didn't have a problem getting it off of the 41, but on the 31, it left a bunch of residue behind that I had to get off. Other than that, you just have to put the fan onto the actual block, the, uh, the radiator block, and then install that into the rear of your computer. That's incredibly self-explanatory, and the guide really couldn't be any clearer about that. And then you have a USB cable that you run. I ran mine down through the back of the computer and plugged into the bottom USB uh, plug on the motherboard itself. It's one of those like eight pin or 10 pin USB headers. And then you have the three pin fan header that you plug into the CPU fan to give power to the pump. And then you have another cable that comes out with two PWM fan control, you know, PWM four pin plugs for your fan on the actual radiator. And they give you two of them in case you're doing a push pull, but only one fan does come included. So now the big question, Temperatures, how did these things do, especially compared to the just behemoth of a CPU cooler that is the Noctua NHD 15? You can see here the baseline was the NHD 15. All of these temperatures were taken with an ambient room temperature of 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So some adjustments were made to the numbers as the room temperature adjusted a little bit to keep everything in line. And as you can see, the Kraken X31 came in running just a little bit hotter overall than the Noctua. The Noctua actually idled hotter than any of them uh, but the, considering the size difference between the X31 and the NHD15, uh, you're getting a lot more cooling uh, per, I guess, square inch in your case, which is really important if you're gonna be doing something in a small build, uh, you know, particularly trying to maybe pack this thing into like a mini ITX build or something like that. And then the X41, which is the 140 millimeter and slightly thicker radiator version of the X31, did very impressive results on that one for being just a single fan uh, radiator cooling setup with the, uh, the lowest idle temp, the lowest Prime 95 temp, and then you will notice that the Valley benchmark was really consistent across the board. All three seem to do just about the same as far as uh, gaming is concerned or a synthetic gaming benchmark. So these benchmark numbers were derived from running the system at idle for five minutes and then getting the maximum temp reading off of real temp taking all four cores and getting an average of those four cores. And Prime 95 was large in place FFT for five minutes. And again, taking the average. And then finally I ran through the entire Valley benchmark and did the same for that. These tests were run on my 4790K running at 4.6 gigahertz overclock, which is very mild, using adaptive voltage because I wanted to really kind of stress things out a little bit in Prime 95 just to see how well all three of these coolers could perform and uh, didn't really come all that close to the thermal max, which I was a little concerned about with the X31, so I'm impressed. And then finally, let's take a quick look at the software before I come to my conclusion on this. All right, well, here is the CAM software that comes with the NZXT X31, X41, and X61, and there's only one thing in here that you really can't do with the X31, and we'll get to that in a minute, but it it's basically involves messing with the LED that's on the actual cooling block. Since there's not one on the X31, that feature doesn't really have any purpose. But 
Uh, all that said, here's what you get when you load it up. You get a lot of nice information here. You can see on the left, you've got some specs about your computer and you can actually hit advanced mode and boom, you go into all of your core temps, uh, your maximums, your minimums, fan RPMs, uh, you know, all kinds of just nice stuff to have. So, and then below that you've got, you know, you have to create an account or you don't have to, but I did. Uh, and then it tells you, you know, Windows 8.1, then there's some IP information that I've got blocked out. And then over here in the middle is just a general overview of what's going on with your computer. So it shows you the real time temperatures on your CPU and it looks like it's taking an average of things by looking at the left hand side. And then you can actually look at your GPU as well. So that's pretty handy. It's a little bit warm in the room, so temperature is a little higher than usual, but it's also, I'm, I'm pulling some, some, some usage off my cores by running the uh, Open Broadcaster software to capture the screen. And then this area over here, it's really nice. You can see you just hover over any part in the graph and it gives you the information. Uh, you can also check you know, what kind of load you're running, so there you go. And you can actually break it down by hours, days, weeks, months. So if your computer's on for a super long time and you want to kind of see a, a long-term graph of what's been going on, it's actually pretty handy. And you can do that for your CPU, your GPU, your memory. You can check your network usage. So if you wanted to know how much, you know, you're using within a day and, you know, that kind of information, you can check that there too. Hard drive information uh, as far as heat and load. So you can see temperatures are, you know, all right there. And then uh, just fan information, which CPU is not reporting because that's what the uh, NZXT is plugged into, and then uh, GPU. So you can see the history of your GPU fan usage as well. So lots of information over here in this little graph area. It's pretty handy. Now, if you click on from basic to Kraken, things change a little bit. Now you've got uh, some curve information. And let me get back out of here. I was playing around in there, but this is where you'll land. And again, it still shows your core temp and then it shows your liquid temperature. And then it also shows, and you can jump between you know, Fahrenheit and Celsius, which is nice. And then it, uh, it shows your pump RPM and then your fan RPM. And before everybody freaks out and goes, oh, your pump RPM's changing, your pump RPM's always supposed to be static, it's gonna kill your pump, blah, blah, blah. This is supposed to happen with these coolers. The, the whole thing on the outside of the box is it's the first adjustable speed pump cooler. So yes, th this is going to jump around it's designed to, that's the way that Kraken made the X3141 and 61. So now you can go in and you can select either performance, which really ramps everything up. You can see the curve gets really aggressive there. So if you're getting hotter and you'd like, and you're not you know, too adverse to fan noise, you can go ahead and just run with this. There's silent, which I find is actually a little too silent. It doesn't really start to ramp up until you get to about 50-ish degrees. And then it spikes it so hard that the, the fan noise is pretty noticeable when you make that jump between, you know, 40 and 60-ish. And then custom seems to be the sweet spot I found. And I ran all the benchmarks on custom because it's, it's a nice slow rise. It's a nice curve that it has going there. And you can click anywhere in it and then move stuff around or you can right click and then take the marker off. So, you know, there's lots you can do in here as well. Uh, and then there's just a complete manual mode that you can go into. And right now that's gonna take everything to 100%. So going back to custom, uh, you know, here's all your notifications. So it shows me an hour ago that Prime 95 is using more than 90% of my processing power. And uh, if things get too hot, it's gonna pop up in here. Your CPU load has exceeded 100 and is reaching its limit. You know, any, anything that the, the software seems to think shouldn't be happening is gonna show up in this little notifications area down here, which is nice. And you can actually go in and you can tell it what kind of notifications you want to have. So if the pump reaches a certain speed or the fan reaches a certain speed and you want it to ping it in there, you can. You can also set the temperature uh, as far as if you want it to report when your liquid temperature gets too high. And here's what's the, uh, the really interesting part with the 41 and 61, which uh, we'll take a look at the 61 soon, but you can go in here and look at your lighting effects. So the block has a light, an LED on it, but what's cool is you can adjust the colors uh, quite a bit. You've got the uh, RGB spectrum. So you've got uh, obviously your red, your green, and your blues that you can play around with. I've got mine set so it matches the GeForce GTX logo pretty close on the uh, GPU there. I've got my LED strip turned off right now so I can kind of enjoy that and, and show the lighting effects. So here's the other options. You can click on breathing, which just kind of fades around quickly to a bunch of different colors and kind of distracting. Uh, blinking, which really, um, yeah, you can speed it up too and have it like 
hold a blink for a really long time or, you know, not, just, ugh, I don't know. This one, I don't know why I would use that. It's incredibly distracting. Uh, let me go back in here. I gotta turn off blinking and there's rainbow and I find rainbow to be equally distracting as breathing. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just cycling through colors at random. So for me, since this is in my peripheral vision, standard is the best option because it doesn't pull my attention away from my monitor. But what is nice is you can set your high temperature notification in here so that whatever color you have it set on, it will turn to uh, a specified color of your choice in here if your temperatures get too high, which is really nice because in my case it would turn red and I could see that out of my, my peripheral vision if I was gaming or doing something else and I didn't have anything up to tell me what my temps were. So, if, you know, of all these kind of pieces of software that I've used, I have to say, really, this, this one's nice. It's very polished, so uh, kudos to uh, NZXT on this one. So, overall, how do I feel about these? Well, I have to say, fairly impressed. I came in with fairly low expectations. I'm not really a huge fan of these single fan, fan fan? Single fan radiator setups, I, I find if you have room in your case, you're far better off going with like a 240 or a 280, something that uses at least two fans. And uh, so I'm excited to try out the X61 for that. And that's why I was such a big fan of the H105 because I really loved the mounting system on that. So I'm glad to see that that mounting system has been brought over to the X31, the X41, and the X61. And the performance numbers I got off of these was, was not bad at all. I really didn't expect, especially the X31, to do as well as it did because it's such a great option if you have a really small build, particularly like a micro ATX, I mean, it's just, it's gonna be great for that if you've got the, a case that is set up to allow for a small water cooling loop to be installed. And then if you have a case where you've already got a radiator in the top, or maybe you just wanna add like a G10 bracket or something to your GPU, and you got a room for 140 millimeter mount, then the X41 is gonna give you a little bit more bang for your dollar, in my opinion. You're getting the braided cables and the LED and a few more features, and it just overall is a better performer with a lower RPM on the fan, so it's quieter. So, all that said, would I recommend these? Yes, I would. I have to say, um, I wouldn't particularly use the X31 unless I was gonna be doing a small build, but I could definitely see picking up the X41 and uh, doing some liquid cooling on my 780 Ti reference. Hint, hint, that may be coming. Well, thanks for watching as always. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded. I'm also on Facebook over at facebook.com forward slash tech uploaded. And if you have a, a burning issue or a, a question you really want answered right away, or just a general comment, you can do that. At techuploaded at gmail.com. That's the thing I'm most likely to see first. So as always, don't be a stranger. Check back soon.